Would you like to know the number one thing you need to know about your brain if you're a human? Now, if you're not a human, you don't have to watch this video. But if you are a human, I encourage you to watch the video to find out exactly what that is. Hi, my name is Jesse. Welcome to the channel, Open Source Owners, where we try to answer the question, what would it be like if humans had an owner's manual? Let's get into it. And really, this is going to be based on neuroscience because they study the brain. Um, neurons that fire together, wire together. That's a very common phrase. You've probably all heard it. What it basically means is that whatever you focus on grows maps in your brain or grows connections in your brain. And those connections and maps are called neural networks, which is a big collection, or neural pathways, which is a smaller sort of like first step before we make a network. So what this means is no matter how old you are, no matter what it is you want to learn, learning, changing, changing the physical structure of your brain requires focus attention. And, you know, typically, well, I would say also it will always require repetition. So you'll have to do something again and again and again to see the results. Everybody knows this. Anything you've ever gotten good at, whether it's video games or riding a bike or juggling or driving your car, speaking English, speaking Chinese, whatever it is that you've gotten good at over the years required this process. So you had to repeat it. You had to give it your attention and you had to do it over some period of time. What happened in the brain was neurons were firing together, wiring together and making maps, mental models of what your mouth is supposed to do when you speak English or what your hands are supposed to do when you're doing archery or how to cook well, or how to dance, or how to read faster. Any of those things that you learn required this process. So neurons that fire together, wire together. Okay, cool. So the brain is plastic. The brain can change. Your brain can change. My brain can change. We're not born broken. If we grew up broken, we can change that brokenness, and we can sort of stitch things back together again. The brain is highly adaptable. Now, it's helpful to know that this process takes about 21 to 60 days. That's the length of time it takes to form a habit, but a habit just has a correlation. The, the correlate of what a habit is in the brain is that the network has begun to fire and solidify together. So the firing together, let's, let's do an analogy to understand this. If you were walking in a grass field and you did a circle over and over and over, just a plain grass like your lawn or something like that, and you just kept walking that same circle every day, five, ten minutes a day, what you would begin to say, see, is the grass is becoming grooved in in that circle, right? And so, you know, whether you're there or not, that circle remains, and that's the wiring together. The firing together is that you're actually walking that pathway. So neurons that fire together, wire together, it's the same is true in a landscape. If you walk one path back and forth again and again, that's the firing and the wiring is that it remains. Now it doesn't remain forever, but it remains semi-permanently. It may, remains for some period of time. So if you wanna try this, pick a spot in your lawn and walk a certain shape, circle or square or triangle or a zigzag pattern, but walk the same shape for 21 days. And what you will see is the pathway that you have then laid out before you persists. It is there. And if you do it for 60 days, the pathway just gets stronger. If you do it for six months, the pathway just gets more strong. Okay. So the opposite is also true. This is also important. Neurons that no longer fire together, no longer wire together. So if we want to detach old habits, like let's say every time we feel angry, you know, we yell at somebody. That's our neural networks. That's the habits that we form. That's the pattern that we got used to. That's what our brain's path of least resistance is. But we probably don't want to do that because that's not cool in our relationships and it's not really mature to yell just because you're feeling upset or something like that. So by wanting to change that, we have to sort of disconnect, decouple those neural networks together and probably put into um, a, like a replacement network. So let's say you decide instead of yelling, what I will do is I will, I like yoga. So I'll do yoga every time I get angry or I like being physical. So I'll hit a boxing bag every time I get angry or I like meditating. So I'll meditate. Whatever it is for you, that's your preferred behavior when that feeling of anger comes up, then the good news is it takes 21 to 60 days before that new network, that new association with anger in this case, um, becomes more and more path of least resistance. Your brain just will automatically go to it. It'll get easier. It'll get more natural. The bad news is it takes about six months to two years to break old habits. So what we see here, though, is a very important pattern. And that's why I say this is the number one thing to understand about your brain. Um, the pattern is new things are much easier to install than old things are to uninstall. Now, both happen. You're a human. You have a plastic brain. It can change. You can eventually take away patterns that used to be something that you did habitually, maybe without even thinking about it, and get rid of them completely. They can just go away. 
Um, it's even possible if you speak English that you could end your life forgetting how to speak English. Now, that's an extreme example. You'd have to sort of go live somewhere where there's no connection to English and you never speak it for 20, 30 years. But you might actually start, you will certainly start thinking in that new language and you will certainly start dreaming in that new language. And eventually, by the end of your life, you might be like, gosh, I don't even remember English words. Like that part of my brain is gone. Now, just like the riding the bicycle sort of analogy, the English would come back pretty quickly because those patterns are sort of like in the ether or in the memory of your genes or whatever it is. Um, so they'll come back if you jump back into an English speaking country uh, much quicker than if you had to learn English for the first time. OK, so again, the big point here is it's really quick to install, install new habits. So have faith in that, have hope in that we can install new change quickly. And it takes a, a little bit longer, an order of magnitude longer to get rid of the old pathways. But, you, you know, I think if this was reversed, it would be a much less hopeful message. I think if it was like it's really hard to get new patterns installed, um, that would be a tough sell for people. But 21 to 60 days, that's not that hard. That's not that difficult. Okay, so neurons are the signaling cells of the nervous system and brain, okay? So they're just cells um, like any other cell in the body, but they're sort of signaling, they're meant for communication. Um, just a couple tidbits to know about neuron communication. Um, it travels really fast. 268 miles an hour is how fast the signals go. And it's not just one neuron to one neuron, it's a cascade of neurons happening, all based on your conscious attention. It's what you focus on determines what neurons are actually you know, engaging and lighting up and moving. Um, so the power of your attention is actually one of the critical secrets to being a human. That's why Buddhists talk about, you know, growing the networks of attentional networks related to like mindfulness and meditation and stuff like that. That's why almost all religions have some aspect of honing attention, being able to sort of focus for a long period of time on one thing or another. We need to grow the skill of attention keeping, especially in today's modern world with all the distractible sort of gadgets that we now have, dings and updates. And, you know, just like I, I heard recently that people look at Instagram on average 50 to 150 times a day. And many of those, maybe the preponderance of those is just mindlessly picking up your phone and looking at it and shutting it down. You barely even scrolled through anything. You just like did it as a habit, right? So we have a we have a world that's demanding. Uh, so everybody's sort of seeking out our attention more and more and more. Yet that is the strongest, most sort of powerful skill that we have as a human is honing our attention and choosing what we choose to focus on, so that we can direct our brain development, our neuron communication. Now your brain, my brain, all have a hundred billion neurons, give or take. You'll hear different figures for this, but let's just say somewhere around there, hundred billion neurons in the brain. Each of those neurons, though, connects with ten thousand other neurons. That's some insane, infinitely high number that I can't calculate, and it doesn't even matter. The point is, the brain is like, has infinite connectivity. That's why people can lose major parts of their brain and still do the basic human processes that need to be done, because the connectivity, or what is called the connectome in neuroscience, is profound. That's our greatest gift as a human, is we can connect the brain in millions and millions and millions of different patterns and networks and skills and learning new things and forgetting old things. So that's the power of the brain. So you're, I mean, I've heard, and I don't know that this is true, but I've heard that's more stars than are estimated to be in the entire universe. Um, I don't know if that's true. It's certainly more stars in the galaxy. And, it, you know, that's inside of your brain. That's inside of your child's brain. That's inside of your partner's brain. We're kind of walking miracles and we don't give ourselves that credit. Um, it's pretty impressive if you really stop to think about it. So one second of computing power um, to of 1% of the brain. So they took 1% of the brain's computing power um, it, for one second only, that took 83,000 processors 40 minutes to achieve that level of computation. Um, so that's the power of your brain. It takes a tremendous amount of computational power in the way that we think of it today to achieve what a brain can do and does all day, every day, um, in millions and millions and millions of different directions that you have no idea about. All your neuroception, all how the body is working, all the subtle signals coming from the bacteria and the fungi in your body profoundly uh, affecting and moving through the neuron system in the brain and the nervous system, you don't even know about it. You're just in the meanwhile eating cereal and not even thinking about it, right? <laughs> so this is the power of the brain. Now imagine if we start to bring the brain's power more and more into our intention. So we, with our attention, we actually get to focus on our intention. Like we want to become more peaceful. We want to like 
make the world a better place. We want to learn how to do something that's profoundly important. We want to invent a product that serves humanity. We want to clean up plastic in the ocean, whatever it is. If we can put our attention into an intention, then we have the power of, of gods, really. Um, so that's you. That's me super powerful. So if you'd like to know more about this, uh, please download this free 60 uh, page ebook that I wrote called the owner's manual part two. This is all about the learning and knowledge. This is very um, information dense. If you have downloaded it already, comment below. What'd you think? Did you like it? Is it worth it? Do, should other people get it? Um, if you haven't download it, it's free. Just click the link below and we'll send it to you in your email. It'll be yours forever. A lot of this information that I talk about in my videos comes from this handout or this book. And that was the number one thing you need to know about your brain if you're a human. And now if you're not a human, thanks so much for watching. Um, I don't know why you watch because I don't think you have the perceptual capacity to understand what we were talking about. If you are a human, comment below what you liked about this video. Comment what you'd like to see more of. Um, teach me something about brains that I didn't know. Put it in the comments. I like to interact. I like to learn. Um, and in the meantime, hit the like button and the, hit the bell and all the YouTube things because that helps grow our channel and get this out to more people. Thank you guys so much. I hope you learned something new. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.